hi welcome back to my youtube channel and welcome if it is your first time watching i am when in today's video i want to share with you a thought that i had i was having a conversation with someone and then they made the statement if god wants me to change he will make me the trouble that i have there is the fact that you that says if god wants you to change he will make you like he made paul i'm like you are not ignorant about the truth you know the truth but then you are saying that god has to make you you are trying to run away from responsibility of doing what you need to do or surrendering yourself to god to be transformed and putting it on god so that now you would have the excuse that god does not want you to change to continue living the lifestyle you're living and i believe there are more than one person that are living this lifestyle believing this thinking that god will make them change if he wants them to change and i'm like who told you that god doesn't want you to change now that is the first thing i want to say god created all of us man fell he sent his only begotten son how else would god want you to change that he gave up his son for you so that through the death and resurrection of his son you would be transformed how else or what else do you want him to do to make you to force you, if God is like that, then Adam would not have eaten of that fruit. Eve would not have had the opportunity to talk with the devil. Because God would have micromanaged them from the beginning. If that was who God is, which means he would not have given man the free choice and freedom and responsibility that he gave man from the beginning. If you feel like because God is powerful, that his power is the kind that humans operate in when they try to micromanage people that are under them, you are wrong. God does not try to micromanage anybody. God is not a narcissistic personality. God gives us freedom in, and it allows us to use that freedom however we want. But there are consequences to every choice we make. Now, that is the part we cannot choose. You choose what you do but you cannot choose the consequences like scripture says i present you life and death choose life that you and your family would live but then you have the choice to choose death and you face the consequences also so god will not make you change if you don't want to change you cannot put that on god and say if god wants me to change he will make me change God will not force you to do what you do not want to do. And I want to say that again, that God will not force you or force me to do what I don't want to do. If God wanted to force us to do what we would not want to do, everybody would have believed in Jesus today. Like it would be a must that everybody must believe in Jesus, whether you like it or not. We know that at the end of the day, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that jesus is lord but i'm speaking about right now there would be no one else under the sun who would say how oh, i've not believed in jesus god would make after sending his son and his son came and he died for our sins we caused his death because god lost us god gave him up and then you are saying if god wants to make me change or if God wants me to change, it would make me. If God is like that, God would definitely make everybody would believe in Christ. In fact, we wouldn't even have any choice. You would not have a choice to sin because you would not be allowed to. But God gives us choice. And he gives us the freedom to choose. That is why when Paul came to the book of Romans, Paul definitely had something to say. In Romans 12, Paul said, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind you will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. What did that scripture say? Paul said, I plead with you to give your body. It is from your free choice. If you want to change, you have to surrender. You have to allow God to work in you. Because if it was the other way around, then God will take your body as a living sacrifice. <laughs> Are you not happy that God gave you the freedom? Then be responsible about this freedom that he gave to you. 
And I know it's not everybody that is on this table, but if you are on this table, then I'm speaking to you. God will not make you change because God has provided you with everything that would lead you to change. The scripture says that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, which means if we refuse to choose the things that he has provided to help us live a godly life, then he's not going to make us. He's not going to force our hands. God has given you the freedom to choose him. And if you do not choose him, nothing will happen. God has given you the freedom to choose how you want to live your life, the kind of choices you're making, the kind of decisions you're making in your marriage, whether you want to be someone that's honest and transparent or in any friendship that you have, whether you want to be transparent, you want to be honest, whatever it is that you want to do. God will not make you do it. God has already told you as a Christian single that sexual immorality is out of the line. And now you're coming back to tell him, if you want me to stay sexually pure, you will make me. It's your choice to make. If you want to stay sexually pure, it doesn't mean it's easy. It means you surrender yourself to him and allow to walk the way he wants to walk because everything for you to live that godly life has been provided for you. The community that you would meet, who would help you walk that walk, are already available. It's just for you to do your own part of making a decision to start the journey and then look for the community, pray to him, in surrender, you will bring in the right people who are going to walk with you. That's why scripture says, flee youthful lust. And then it did not just tell you what to flee. I think that is in 2 Timothy. It tells you also, after you flee this thing, you have to embrace godliness. Scriptures in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, it tells you what to pursue. Pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure heart. Now, whose responsibility is this? God's? God will make you do it? No. He says it is your responsibility to flee and pursue. Flee one thing, pursue another. Paul says, when I was a child, I acted like a child. But now that I'm old, I have to let go childish things and be an adult and be a man and be a grown-up. In Christ, he will not force you to do things that you don't want to do. He has given you everything you need to live the life he wants you to live. It is your own choice to embrace all he has provided for you to live the life he wants you to live. In that Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Whose choice? Yours. Oh, God will make you not to copy. It is your choice. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. It says what? Let God. If God is the one that will make you, he will do it without asking you to let him. That is why he says, let him, allow him, give him permission. Oh, you do not know that God needs your permission to help you? Yes, he does. If you do not know, know today that God needs your permission to help you live the life you want to live, if you want to follow him. God needs your permission before he does anything in your life. That was why Jesus walking on earth, every single time he met someone that he wanted to help, he would ask them, what do you want me to do for you? Clearly, he sees that the person is blind, but he, he would ask, what do you want me to do for you? Because he's saying, I want you to give me permission to help you. And the person would say, I, uh, I want to see. He sees the lame and he says, what do you want me to do for you? And the lame man would say, okay, I want to walk. He saw the man that was bound for 38 years. He knew, but he had to ask him and said, what do you want me to do for you? And the man started whining around, oh, I've been here. I don't have anybody to help me. This and that. And Jesus helped him. And you have to be aware of this, that in your own life, God is asking you, what do you want me to do for you? That's the essence of you praying. What do you want me to do for you? That's the essence of him telling you, come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find help anytime you need it. He is telling you, I want you to give me permission. I won't just come into your life and wreck things. If I would invade your life, I need your permission. If I would change things in you, I need your permission. And we all have to come to a place of understanding that when we say, I surrender all, it says, I am giving you permission, God. 
when you give God permission for him to work in your life, that then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You have to let God transform you. So, it is your responsibility. It is not God's responsibility to change you. It is your responsibility to give him permission. Then he will change you. God won't make you change. He wants you to change. But then he says, I gave you the choice to make. Do you want to change? I can make you change. Do you want to let go that addiction? I can help you. But then you have to give me the permission. That is why if you don't want to change, don't accept the grace of God. If you don't want to change, keep on trying on your self-efforts. If you don't want to change, do not accept Jesus. Because once you accept Jesus, you are telling him, I'm giving you permission to come into my life and invert. Because if you allow him to come into your life and accept his grace, you are going to change. So if you don't want, then it's okay for you to remain and try by your effort so that you can boast on you trying by your effort. So that you can have what to boast. But if you know that you are saved by grace through faith, not of you, not of works, so that you will not have anything to boast, but to give God all the glory, then accept his grace. And allow him, let him in. And he will transform you. So, God wants you to change, but then he wants you to give him permission. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that this has been helpful. Let me know in the comment section what thing has inspired you about today's video and then share your thoughts with me in the comment section. Thank you.